the criticism of the p-value is basically someone made it up. Um, psychologists in the 60s thought this seemed feasible um, and suggested lowest, co lowest one acceptable was 0 0.05 and that's how it's been ever since. I was reading um, this week that a science journal has actually said it will now refuse to publish papers that use p-values. Um, because very often the p-value is used to camouflage um, weak results. Now, I'll give you an example, and forgive me, it's another health example. Um, I used to teach pain management, and there was a very interesting paper came out about the difference between giving people who were in pain with cancer oral morphine or giving them morphine in a patch that you put on their, on their body and it, it releases the morphine slowly. Um, and in the abstract, because you always put your sexy findings in the abstract, it said that the patients who had the morphine patch got more sleep, less, less interrupted sleep at night than the people on the oral morphine. And the p-value was 0 0.001. So highly statistically significant. If you read the paper, the people on the morphine patches got on average eight minutes more sleep per night than the people taking the oral morphine. So whilst it's statistically very significant, clinically it means absolutely nothing. It wouldn't help a practitioner make a decision as to whether they should prescribe oral morphine or morphine patches. It probably wouldn't make that much difference to the patients. Eight minutes isn't really very much extra sleep. Um, and I think that's really why this, this journal is starting to go, you know what, let's move away from the p-value. Let's actually look at what the data is telling us. Let's look at things like ranges and confidence intervals, which actually is embedded in the data.